Back in Microsoft Flight Simulator, and for today's flight, we're going to feature the next aircraft in the Avionics and Update 2 beta, which is the Queen of the Skies, the 747. We're here in St. Martin, and we're going to do what used to be a real world flight for KLM in the 747. They used to fly from Amsterdam to St. Martin, and then they would continue on down to Curacao. So we're going to do from St. Martin to Curacao. It's about an hour and a half flight. And we're here in St. Martin, which is famous for uh, the beach right at the end of the runway where you can get blasted by jet blasts from aircraft that are taking off or have aircraft do very low approaches over the uh, runway threshold. Yeah, and uh, the airport runway is about 7,500 feet long, and then it has a big mountain at the end here, which requires you to do a uh, turn right after takeoff. Normally, uh, aircraft uh, SOPs are to fly runway heading to 400 feet before doing initiating any turn, but this aircraft has a waiver for most companies to allow you to turn at 50 feet to uh, start uh, that turn so you avoid terrain at the uh, end of the runway. Yeah, so it's a great airport to fly out of, and yeah, should be a lot of fun. Uh, this is the second rendition of the uh, update beta for this uh, aircraft. They have fixed a few things, but there's still a few bugs in the uh, system, and we'll talk about those as we uh, go along. So, thanks for joining me. If you're uh, new to the channel, hit that subscribe button, sign up for notifications, and then you'll see videos like this when I put one in the future. Without further ado, let's uh, hop in the aircraft and get this Boeing going. Okay, we're starting off here at cold and dark. And I will, uh, well, might as well connect the jet bridge to the airplane here. There we go. Okay, we'll get some uh, battery on. Standby power is auto. We'll get our uh, external power on. That looks good. Get our IRSs selected to nav. And you'll see a uh, selection here tells you time to align. And I got it in fast align, which is one minute, but I'll show you there's a settings where you can change that if you want to make it more realistic. So that's time to align. Uh, now we'll get our APU going. That looks good. And we can monitor the APU start if we go down to the stat page, bring that up, and you can see our APU is starting up. Okay, looking good. Once the APU is running, we should get APU available, and then we'll turn on our APU power. But for, we'll set up the rest of the panel here. So these are all on, but their engines are running, so we have our drive lights and they're showing off. The demand pumps are all off for now. We've got all the uh, engine drum pumps are selected on, but they're low pressure because the engines aren't running yet. Check all our lights are good there. We'll come up and we'll check our standby, emergency standby. Nothing is uh, simulated for the fire tests. There's our engine start levers. Uh, we'll come down, our fuel is all off for now get that on before the start. We'll turn on our window heat. We'll get our engine anti-ices set to auto and our wing anti-ice set to auto as well. Lights are good. We'll just turn on the nav light for now. It's good. Uh, on the panel here, nothing else is simulated up here. Temperature selectors aren't simulated. Uh, the packs aren't simulated. You can't control those can't turn the APU bleed off, but we'll leave it on for now, and then we'll get our engine-driven pumps on, and that looks good. So the overhead panel is set up. We'll set up our uh, MCP, get our auto throttle armed, and we'll get our flight director on, get our auto brake auto. Should have our APU good now, so we got APU available, so that's good come down and we'll set up our transponder. I'll just put it in a squawk code. Leave it standby for now until we get going. We'll get our seatbelt sign on. I think that's all the setup. So the next thing we'll do is the 
route entry. So before we do the route entry, I'll just show you there's uh, settings, and they only have a couple things in setting. You can select ND mode to heading or track up, or you can set your IS line time to instant accelerator reel. So I had an accelerate, which is one minute. If you put it to reel, it will take like could take like five to ten minutes depending on the location where you're uh, aligning your IRSs. Okay, so we'll go back uh, in it ref. We'll put in our GPS position. Here we go. Alignment's complete. Go to the route now, and we will enter our route. So we're taking off out of uh, Tango, November, Charlie, Mike, St. Martin, going to a uh, Curso, Tango, November, Charlie, Charlie. Uh, we'll put a KLM flight number in. I don't remember, I don't know what the real world flight number would have been for this flight when it existed. And we're going to be taking off from way 10. Okay, so we'll activate and execute that. So we'll go to the departure. We're doing the BOPAT 2 to the Dandy transition off of 10. We'll execute that. Go back to the route, next page. And we'll get our flight plan up here. We're off 10, Bopar 2, Dandy, and then Airways Mike uh, 576. To Milok, M I L O K. And then Uniform Mike 576. To Acora, A C O R A. Okay, we'll execute that. Go to the init ref. So for fuel, uh, this is one of the bugs uh, on this aircraft. So I put on. Uh, we only required about sixty thousand pounds of fuel. I put an extra eighty thousand pounds of fuel on uh, because there is a bug, and I'll sh kind of show you on the fuel panel what that is. But, uh, yeah, we had a flame out uh, when I tried it, this flight uh, as a practice. Uh, I had a flame out on the uh, number four engine, then eventually number one engine. And uh, I don't think they have the, I think there's a bug with the fuel modeling on the aircraft. Uh, zero fuel weight, so I've set the weights in the sim, and that's good. Reserves for this flight, so let's get our reserves. are going to be 18.7, we'll make it. be cruising at uh, 38,000 feet. Cost index is 191. And CG will get that from the sim. Let's keep that. For our takeoff, we're going to do a full rate of takeoff because of a short runway in the terrain and a full rate of climb. So we'll leave those. Lot 20 is most likely uh, takeoff. And not going to do a D rated takeoff. We'll get our CHG from the sim. And we got the speeds of 138, 140, 157. So those are all good. Put our legs page. Nice thing is, like the 787, you can split the uh, FMC. So we'll put the takeoff ref page over here and the legs page over here. So that is all our data. Now I'll show you on the fuel page what I was talking about. So if we select the fuel page, see the tank configuration. So with the fuel load I had when I did the practice flight, it was like under 10,000 pounds of fuel in the main tank one and main tank four. And uh, we, yeah, we ran out of fuel. Uh, these tanks emptied and nothing, uh, the transfer valve didn't open up to feed off main tank two or three. I'm not sure how the reserve one and four fit into this, if they're supposed to feed into that. Anyway, uh, it ended up that these tanks both ran out of fuel. So hopefully I put enough in that 16 uh, in each main tank should be enough fuel to get that, get us there. Uh, but yeah, we ran out of fuel. So and you'll see there's no fuel flows showing up when the uh, when the aircraft is running. So we'll look at this again when the aircraft's running, but nothing shows up the position of these valves and it doesn't show where the fuel is coming from. So yeah, that was a bug, and so hopefully I put enough fuel on, so we're not going to have that issue. Might as well go to the checklist, and we might as well do our before start checklist. I'll set up the MCP first, uh, so we need our uh, runway heading is going to be 096. And the 
B2 is 157. And the SID uh, doesn't have an altitude, so we'll put just put 10,000. I'll just uh, brief you the SID. So we're going to be doing the O part 2 off of runway 10. A SID requires a 1,200 foot ceiling and 2.8 miles visibility, which we have uh, to avoid the uh, terrain at the end of the runway. And then it says initial climb may be suspended by radar vectors. As soon as practical, uh, make a right-hand turn and then uh, climb direct Bopart and cross Bopart 4,000 or above and then uh, direct Dandy. Okay, so uh, what we'll do is we'll take off in heading select and we'll uh, select a heading down to the south here. And then we'll, uh, once we're established on that heading, clear terrain, uh, then we will... Uh, We'll uh, intercept this. We'll just go direct bow part, whatever that takes us there. So that's going to be the uh, departure. So let's uh, get into the checklist then. So emergency lights, uh, they were on and guarded. There they are. Nav uh, light is on. Logo light was off. Flight director, auto throttle arm, and seatbelt selectors were all good. Transponder panel is set, so we might as well put it down into Alt on. So you got to be careful if you go too far, it's Alt reporting off. So then you'll get a TCAS uh, message up here. So takeoff speeds are set. Got V2 and our speeds are all good. Takeoff trim, uh, it is 4.8. So we'll just set that. 4.8 is set. Altimeters. Let's hit the B key. We'll get our altimeters set. Take off and taxi briefing is complete. Beacon light, uh, we can throw that on. Beacon light is on. Engine bleed air switches are all on. So the before start checklist is complete. So for the start, we'll uh, pressurize the hydraulics. We'll turn on the fuel and then the start sequences I've seen, I watch a YouTube video of starting the 747. They start uh, four, they just verify the auto starts running. So we'll put the engine page on here. And you'll see, uh, you should see auto start there. And then they, once that's verified, they start three. You can start two engines at the same time. And so we'll start three. And then once those starts are complete, then we'll start one and two the same way. Okay, so let's set up for our pushback. We'll get rid of the jetway, which will close the door, and we'll pre-plan our pushback. Just push back, fail to the right. Press the pushback. Cockpit to ground. This is ground. Stand by. Do that caution. So we'll pressurize our hydraulics now. Beacon lights on. We'll turn on our fuel. Fuel is all on. So it looks good. Since we are hooked up, we should be ready to go. Scale this out a little bit. Turn on the terrain. Okay, sir. The bypass pin is installed. All doors and hatches closed and all ground equipment is removed. We are cleared for start and push. Okay, cleared for push start. Please release parking brake. Release parking brake. Parking brakes are released. Commencing pushback. You can start the engines in sequence. It will start in the sequence. Okay, so beacon lights on. We'll start number four. Come down, initiate the fuel. Look for the auto start. So the auto start is going, so we'll do the same thing for number three the fuel and we have auto start function happening there and you can see the engines winding up yeah I've seen the uh, I've been here in St. Martin and taken off and I actually were right, was right behind this aircraft taking off when it was heading off to Aruba I think and uh, it was impressive watching this aircraft depart off this air runway and doing that turnout and big crowds on the beach watching this aircraft depart. It was very impressive. OK, 
Okay, the auto start is going nicely. Good start on number four. And good start on number three. So now we'll start number one. Just the fuel. We have a good auto start going on there. We'll do the same thing on number two. Fuel. And good auto start on number two. Okay, push back completed. Please set your parking brake. Parking brake set. Ground. Startup is complete. You may disconnect. Roger. Good engine start. Clear it to disconnect. See you at the side. Have a good flight. Holding position waiting for the visual. Thank you and goodbye. Okay, the start's looking pretty good. We have engine running on number one. Here are the starters. Click out there. And we have engine running on number two. Good start. We'll get the APU off. Okay, our lights are all good. Packs are all good. Like I said, you can't turn packs on or anything. So we'll get the APU bleed air off. Okay, that looks good. We'll set our flaps to 20. Flaps are rolling. And I'll just do a recall. So recall, and we have no caution items on our ICAS. APU cool down, parking brake set, doors auto, seat belts on, auto brake RTO. So those are all normal indications. As soon as the flaps are good, we will run the or taxi checklist. It's just the default scenery uh, Microsoft Flight Sim for this airport. Okay, flaps are good, so we got APU selector off, auto brake selector is RTO, flaps are set for takeoff, and we'll get our taxi light on, and we are ready to taxi as soon as it before takeoff checklist. If while we're here, we'll just do the flight control checks. So we'll come down to the flight controls and just pull forward, pull back, left aileron right aileron and pull right rudder and pull left rudder okay so that's good and we will uh, taxi out it's just a short taxi uh, just up to uh, the threshold of the runway right there Okay, the parking brake uh, release, some power. Like the 787, I find this airplane does seem to slow down quite a bit when you take off power. I'm not sure if that's realistic. It wasn't on the 787, the aircraft wouldn't slow down quite substantially to introduce power. to set up our FMA uh, real quick as well and I'm going to do it in heading select and uh, VNAV acceleration speed I just use the default of 1500 feet yeah, this is a big aircraft take a look at how big this airplane is on this taxiway. Not a lot of space. 
and we'll just come to a stop here and we will run our before takeoff checklist so the first thing I want to do uh, we're going to be in heading select so heading select and I'll put in VNAV so we got toga VNAV armed and then we'll hit toga on the takeoff roll and we should get our thrust uh, indication there so that looks good stopped here so let's uh, do our uh, checklist so I'll configure the lights now for say we've been cleared to take off so I'll put our taxi light off strobe light on landing light on transponder is set so let's do the before takeoff checklist flight controls are checked VNAV climb display page normally you have the takeoff ref page up so we'll put that um, that's set Engine anti ice is all auto, strobe light is on, lane lights on, transponder is set. So that's our before takeoff checklist complete. Okay, so we'll uh, taxi out and off we go. I'm sure there will be a big crowd on the beach here waiting for us, uh, watching for us to depart, but they don't have anybody simulated. There is a scenery where they do have that simulated, but I don't, I don't have that scenery. Yeah, as I said before, I was uh, fortunate enough to have flown in here, flown in here a few, quite a few times in the past, and and uh, I was lucky enough that we were departing right after the 747. Like we were just lined up, uh, we were in posi hold position just uh, short of the runway as the 747 departed. Impressive sight. Takes quite a bit of power in these turns here. Probably not super realistic, but okay, we'll start bringing the power up. Nicely lined up there. Power's coming up. Big toga. We have thrust ref. Air speed's alive, 80 knots.
flaps are up, so we'll do our post takeoff check. So checklist, landing gears up, flaps are up, wing any ice is set for auto after takeoff checklist complete. We will set uh, direct to dandy. So we'll go to legs page here, we'll go direct dandy. We'll execute that and we'll put it in LNAV. I'll just cursor out there. See Dandy is our first waypoint. We have to be at 4,000 feet or above. So we check in with ATC and let's say they just clear us to our flight plan altitude of 380. So we'll just uh, dial that up. Okay, 380. We're in LNAV, we now speed breath thrust. Just center up our heading bug. And it looks pretty good. Transition L2 is 5,000 feet here, so I'll just set our standard altimeter. And that looks good. So takeoff's good. We reach 10,000 feet. We should accelerate to our climb, so we can go to the climb page here, and we should accelerate to 326 knots, which it does nicely. 10,000 feet. We get our landing light off. And we can probably turn our seatbelts off. Let's range out and look at our route there. Looks good. We'll just uh, get, keep one VOR up for display right now. We can choose our airport information. Just get the airports up as well. Again, the FMC seems to be fairly functional. There is a few bugs. There's one I'll show you when we get to Curacao there, though, but it looks pretty good. Let's hop outside and uh, take a look at the plane climbing away from uh, St. Martin. Not a very big island. Nicely, uh, if we look at our, go to the next page, we can see our optimum altitude is, uh, based on this weight, is 368, so not, our max altitude is 410, so normally you don't fly above optimum, so the flight plan had us at 380, so if I saw this, I would just request uh, 360 as a final, so we could just uh, change it to 360. That will be our final. And then I will just go into cruise here and change our cruise altitude of 360. And then I would just watch uh, this here. They don't have the step climb uh, system modeled here. So I would just watch this as soon as this uh, optimum hit 380. Then I would uh, do a step climb up to 380, assuming the winds were good. So I'll get rid of the checklist and I'll uh, show you the fuel page now and you can see the fuel is burnt off. So we've burned off some fuel, but really nothing's moving from the main tanks. Well, it will burn off a little bit to main tank. So it seems like main tank two and three are feeding engines two and three and one and four are feeding engines one and four. Uh, hopefully these don't go to zero because if they do, we'll uh, have a flame out. So. If I did put in the correct amount of fuel, and we started off with much less fuel in main tanks, one and four, so we'll see how this works out. Yeah, why did my my standard there again? Yeah, there's a little bit buggy. I already hit that. I don't know why I went back to the in the stint as well. Probably because I had in the climb page. I didn't change the uh, transition altitude, so if I go back to the climb page, yeah, should have a climb uh, climb settings where you can put in your transition altitude, but I don't see that on here. Oh, transition altitude, yeah, I'm 180, so that's probably I probably didn't put that in. 
so that maybe that's why it uh, switched back there. I'm not sure. I'll try to remember to put in the transition altitude. Let's do it right now, actually, before we forget. So I'm going to go to the descent page. Oh, so the descent page doesn't show up yet. Okay, that's another bug. Uh, you should be able to access the descent page. I think you actually have to load in an arrival and descent to get it. We'll uh, take a look at that in a minute. But another thing, if I go to the progress page, even though I don't have an arrival and approach loaded, we should still get readings for uh, the ETA and the fuel at these waypoints on the progress page. So uh, for some reason, it doesn't give me that until I load in an arrival and an approach. So we'll take a look at the progress of page after I do that. But yeah, it should, even without the arrival and approach, it should give me these readings here. And then uh, once we can access the descent page, we can put in our descent transition altitude. Yeah, so there are still some, quite a few bugs with the uh, overall aircraft here. Let's get rid of the uh, system page here. But uh, for the most part, it seems to be uh, much more functional than the stock of Sobel aircraft, that's for sure. Okay, so we got a bit of ways to go up to 380. I'll check in with you uh, when we level off, and then we'll uh, load up the uh, arrival and approach, talk about that, and then we'll uh, look at those uh, functionalities when we get uh, when we get up level, level flight. So we'll see you there in a few minutes. Okay, we're just coming up to 36,000 feet to level off here. Can't show things like your data, which gives you your times for your waypoints. Position usually shows the position of the IRSs, but that's not showing up. Airport we had up, show waypoints, stations, and you can have your weather selected as well. Okay, so we're level at 36. Uh, the cruise, normally this up indication would disappear above like 20,000 feet. That goes away. So, not a big deal though, still there. So we have our bugs at, uh, we're at uh, cruising at 857. And you can see the bug speed is set for that, so that's correct. Okay, so yeah. So as I said, there's nothing on the prog page yet until we load the uh, approach. So let's load the approach and then see what we get for the uh, for the uh, progress. Okay, so if I get my flight plan here, we're going to be doing the A core 1 Bravo and we'll do the ILS runway 11. In, uh, so we'll come down to arrival departure. do the A core 1 Bravo, there's no transition, the ILS 11, and we're just doing the straight and final. So we'll execute that. We'll look at our legs page, we can look at a plan here, and we can go to our legs page and we can step along the plan. And it looks like it's all good, except we're probably going to have a disco on the arrival, so we'll zoom in a little bit more. It's nice you can step through the plan here. Yeah, so you see it comes in and then we uh, ends at uh, Puxon and then, uh, yeah, we have a disco there, so we'll have to close that up. So next leg, next page, so we get the disco there, so we'll bring the tape up and we'll close that up and then that should get rid of the disco. We'll go back to the legs page and we'll step through again. Now you can see there's no disco in the uh, approach anymore, so that all looks good. Zoom in a little bit more there. Yeah, so it goes from Puxin to David uh, to the LS. Okay, so we have the uh, approach loaded in. We'll verify everything in a minute here, but now we can go back to back to map mode and let's go to our prog page now. You can see we have progress now with uh, ETA and fuel at each location. So that is showing up now. Uh, but like I said, you shouldn't have to, it should show, still show this information uh, without an arrival and an approach loaded in. 
Okay, you get a position reference page. That looks reasonable. Okay, so let's go and talk about uh, winds. Another thing you can do here is there's no way to manually or, or to automatically upload your flight plan. You have to enter everything in manually. Same thing with the winds, but you can enter the winds. So let's just take a note of what our progress is. So it's got us arriving at 1714 with 109.1. I'll just write those down. 1714 Zulu 109.1 on the fuel. So let's go to the legs page and we go route data and we can actually enter in the wind. So let's bring up our flight plan. We'll get the raw flight plan and we'll go get our wind information. For our next waypoint is Anir, A N N E R, and we'll get the winds will be 217 and 59, temperature minus 51. That's for 38,000, so we'll just use those numbers. We can actually go down and get uh, flight level lower so we can get them from here. So Anner at 360 is 220 minus 46. Okay, so we can put those in. So we go to winds. We're going to be at 360. And then the winds are going to be 220 at 62. And the altitude OAT is going to be 360 minus 46. 360 slash minus 46. So that's the temperature. So that's the for that waypoint. Back to route data, you can see now W is there indicating we have entered winds in there. And we can just go along and do that for all the waypoints and we'll see if we have a change. So I'll do that and then we'll come back and we'll see if we have any change to our progress. So we'll see you in a few minutes after I enter all that data. Okay, I've entered in all the winds, so we have the wind data up till our top of climb there. And now if I go to the prog page, we have the estimate is 1719 which is five minutes longer, and the fuel is going to be a thousand pounds less, 1081, and we have 1091. So that does seem to reflect the uh, change in the wind. So we have an FMC message. I think that's a bug too. Uh, so if I hit recall, I don't see any FMC message here. So back to the legs. No, there's nothing in the FMCs. Go to VNAV. Nope. So I don't know why that's showing up. There's nothing there. So we hit the recall, and it will get rid of that. But if I hit recall again, it should pop up again. Yeah, see, recall FMC message. So I don't know why that's showing up. That's a bug as well. Yeah, so you can enter the winds manually. Uh, I know when I first started flying, uh, used to have to enter everything in manually all the time. Now it's all automatic gate cars uplink. So if you have 50 waypoints, it's nice that you don't have to enter wind data in for 50 waypoints. But I guess if you have a long flight, you have lots of time to do it. So. Okay, so yeah, so that feature is, seems to be working okay. So let's verify our waypoints and altitudes now. I'll just uh, bring up the navigraph charts with the arrival. Coming in via Cora, we have CC 107 at or above 11,000 feet, and then Agus pucks them at or above three, and then it's going to transition to uh, Tabeb 2500 above for the ILS. So we'll just go verify those waypoints are there. So we got a Cora, was a CC 107 uh, at or below 11, 10. Double check that again. Yep, CC 107, flight level at or below 100. And then uh, Agus, Puxen is 3,000 feet or above. And then the approach is Tabib, 2,500 or above. And then FF 11 is 2,500 or above as well. And then
then it should go down to the runway from there. So all the waypoints and altitudes are verified. That looks good. And then the missed approach is climb straight ahead, 114. And then a left turn back to P G G A G. That looks good. And that's at or above 2,500 feet. So all the all that looks good. And then when we looked at the plan before, it was all looking good as well. So if I go out now, I should see a top of descent point, and we do have that for meeting this restriction. So we've got a ways to go. So let's look at our. Uh, NAP page and we got our time to top of the ascent is 143 miles at 17.01 so right now our time is 16.32 so we got just over half, an hour, just under half an hour 29 minutes to go to our top of the ascent so that looks good Optimum's now increased a little bit but we're going to stay at 360 for the remainder of the flight so let's take a look at some of the pages that are modeled up here. So we'll start off with the electrical page. Again, I don't know if these are 100% correct, but they seem to be. We have our generators, one, two, three, and four, and yeah, shows us that driving the various buses here. So again, I don't know if that's modeled correctly, but they do have something. The fuel down. Normally the fuel flow should show up where, where the fuel is flowing to, so if, if main tank 1 was feeding number 1 engine, you should see a green here, I think, and then if main tank 2 is uh, is doing the same thing, it should also feed into number 2, so but it doesn't seem to be anything bottled there, and hopefully we have enough fuel that, I think we have enough fuel that we're not going to run out of the uh, tanks, but I did, on my practice flight, I did run out of fuel in main tank 1 of and the engines did flame out. Uh, we have nothing for the ECS, environmental control. Flight controls was modeled, that looked pretty good when we did it on the ground. Hydraulics seems to be modeled, it shows the four hydraulic systems. Again, I don't know if those are 100% correct. The doors, that all seems to be modeled. We have auto on all the doors. Uh, the gear, we have our pressures and our brake temperature indicators, so that all looks good, and the doors all indicate close, so that seems to be modeled. Uh, then we have the info, and nothing on that. We have our status page we can look at, and we all seems to be modeled there. And again, we have our APU, APU is off, so that looks good database uh, all looks reasonable and then we also have our engine instruments where we can have our we use for the start we have the rest of our oil pressure temperatures and quantities vibration that all seems to be modeled as well okay that looks good we have our cabin altitude landing altitude I'm just going to get rid of that Yeah, so it looks like if we bring up the engine page, we can have access to our cabin altitude and landing altitude information, our rate and our delta P. So I don't know if that should be associated with that or if it should be with the ECS system. It does seem to pop up with the ECS system as well, but that is not showing functional. If I get rid of the ECS system, that goes away. So, so some modeling still to be done with those uh, displays there, it looks like. So not too bad. So yeah, we'll cruise along here. Uh, we should hit the top of descent, and then we'll uh, see how the VNAV functions for our descent. So we have that restriction 10,000 feet or below at CC 107, and then we'll see our transition on to the ILS. So we got about a uh, little ways to go there. I'll check in with you when we get closer to top of climb, and then we will start our descent into uh, Curacao. See you there in a little bit. Uh, before I forget, let's put in our transition level. So before I put in the uh, approach, so we're, we're in the cruise page, which is page two of three. Climb would be page one, so you just go back. You have your climb page, but we finished the climb, so that's disappeared. Cruise page is active, but nothing. You couldn't access the descent page until I put in the flight plan. So now you see 
that we have the descent page. We can also uh, now go in, choose the forecast, and we can put it in our transition level. And from the approach plate, it is 404,000 feet, so we'll put in flight level 40. And if we want, we can also put in our winds for our descent forecast as well. So if I go, go to my flight plan here, go to the raw data, and then we come down and we'll have our descent winds and we can enter those in as well. So we can just put them in 350, uh, 310. So I'm, I'm not going to put 350 because we have that on top of climb. So we can put 310 because there's only the one, two, three, four winds we can put in. Uh, 310, 200, 150, and 100. Then we can put in the uh, wind direction, 232 of 45. Well, 46 close enough. Two at 38 actually, 242 of 48, got the wrong winds there, so 242, 38, uh, 282 at 20, 267 at 7, and 180 at So you can set this all up, uh, and that's it. So descent page is now all configured for the descent with our winds and our transition flight pool. Okay, yeah, I thought I'd just get that done before I forgot about it. So still got a ways to go to the top of descent. I'll check in with you uh, there, and we'll get our descent going into Curso. Might as well just brief you on the uh, approach portion. We looked at the arrival, but the uh, ILS is going to be uh, 111.9 on approach course uh, 114 FAF at 2500 feet down to mids of 232 we can put that in runway elevations 32 feet missed approach is going to be climbed to 2000 feet uh, by the PJG VOR 114 outbound then climbing turn to 2500 feet to the back to the VOR and then hold as directed by AT and hold or as directed by ATC. Transition level is 400. Yeah, that level looks good. And we'll put in our minimums of 232 while we're here. So we can come up here and select our minimums. 232. Seems to spin up quite fast here. So. There's 232, and you can kind of just have that set in the background, and then just recall it later if you want to. Uh, oh, no. Seem to want to do that. Oh, seems to reset. So normally you can just hit reset. We'll get rid of it, and then uh, you can just hit it again, and it'll come back up where you had it left before. But I guess I'll just leave it up. So that's not correct. you can get rid of it and then when you recall it again it should come back up where you had left off but it seems to be re resetting back to zero so okay so we have that set for our bear bugs and yeah even though it's going to be a visual approach okay yeah i think that's everything we need to look at for the approach so okay, for the third time i'll check in with you at the top descent and then we'll start our descent into Kiro. Kiro, so we'll see you there in a little bit Okay, welcome back. We're just coming up to our top of descent, and so let's say we've been cleared to 3,000, which is the lowest altitude on the arrival. So we'll put 3,000 in our MCP, and we are in V9 
VNAV, so it should hit the top of the descent and go down to VNAV. Double check our fuel. The fuel page here, and we'll check that we still have uh, just under 10,000 pounds of size, so it should be lots of fuel for the flight, for the remainder of the flight. And we'll get our checklist, and then the uh, last thing we need to do is set our auto brake setting, so there's no takeoff landing data, so auto brake 2 is set. And that Appears correctly on our high cast there. Oh, we can throw our seatbelt sign on too. Let's look at that. That comes up on our high cast as well. And put our uh, in it ref uh, for flap 30 landing in. And that is shows up there, ref 30153. So that all well, looks good. There's our top of descent. Let's see, throttle's going to idle and it's going to start following our path down on the descent. Let's do our descent checklist. So auto brake selector is set. Any ice still in auto. Altimeter uh, is not set yet, but I did get the weather. The winds were 170 at eight. Temperature was 32, just a few clouds, and altimeter is 2985, and you can have that set in your standby ready to go. So you just go to your altimeter. And you can just dial in what your altimeter is going to be when you go through transition. So that is our descent checklist complete. Next is the approach checklist. So we'll just leave that going through 10,000 feet. And you can see the VNAV band has been fixed. That was an issue before where the band was too wide. So it's got our target speed. And it, on the transition here, if we go to the VNAV descent page, it's going to do 861 and transition to 338. So as it'll maintain the mock. As we get up to 338, it should switch to 338 here. Looks pretty good so far on the descent. And we should meet that restriction for 10,000 feet or below at uh, CC 107. So we'll just monitor that on the way down. We should see the transition. We should get hit 338 here momentarily. I have found that the uh, VNAV has been working fairly well. It's a little abrupt sometimes, but for the most part it seems to be working fairly well. So there we go, 338, and that's set. So that looks good. So it's made the transition. Yeah, so we'll just monitor this uh, as we continue on the approach. So it's going to go there till. Uh, Puxum at uh, 3,000 feet, and then it's going to go to the FAF. We already closed the discontinuity for the approach. Okay, yeah, the runway here is 11,000 feet, so auto brake 2 should be more than substantial. So I'll check in with you when we get close to this 10,000 feet. We'll see how the descent is going there. We should get a drag required, and we do. Hey, drag required. You can see we're just exceeding here. So I can pull out the speed brake. there. There we go. We're going to speed back. So it is giving the drag required message. So as soon as you go outside of the speed band, it should you should get that drag required. It's usually 10 knots above the uh, target speed. And it's quite common for the plane not to be, it's trying to fly the path, so it's quite common. It'll try to maintain within this band, but if, uh, if you go above the band, you're going to get the drag required, so It'll keep accelerating, try to keep the path, but uh, you'll have to use speed brakes to try to keep the plane from slowing down. Or uh, if it goes too slow, once it gets below the bottom of the band, it should apply thrust to maintain within the speed band. Okay, so we should be getting a, should get a drag required message here. Yeah, it just pops in right at the right time. So there we go. Let's clear that message. Now just bring in speed brakes a bit more. The speed brakes seem pretty aggressive. I don't know if they're like that in real life. Going through 18,000 feet, we shouldn't get the uh, message to uh, transition our altitude because we've set 4,000 in the uh, descent page. Yeah, so that looks like it's all come together. Okay, I'll check in with you when we hit 10,000, and then we'll do our 10,000 uh, foot check there, and we'll make sure we meet that restriction. See you there in a few minutes. Okay, we're just coming up. Uh, to 10,000 feet, uh, we should get a 
speed transition back to because we go transition L2 it should go to 240 knots so we should see that and it's meeting this restriction here at 10,000 feet but obviously it's 10,000 feet is uh, high here so it's going to level off at 10,000 feet that's more or less what it would do and then so it's going to meet that restriction maintain 10,000 until we should get another top of descent once we go past this restriction here so let's do our uh, descent checklist while we're waiting for that And we'll get the landing lights on and seatbelt selectors on. Set. Oh, go back. Okay, landing light. Oh, no, we don't want that. We need to go back to the checklist. Uh, set checklist. There we go. Seatbelt selectors are on. Okay. So, checklist is complete. So, we're just going to hit 10,000. Big power changes here, but we are leveling off though. So it's met that restriction, 10,000 is slowing now to 240. And it looks like the descent is going to keep going. I'm not going to say that's incorrect, but will help us slow down a little faster. As you should do this deceleration before you get to 10,000 feet, so I, that's not quite correct. It waited until we hit 10,000 feet to do this deceleration. Now, if the 240 is below your bug speed, uh, for flaps up, I would open the speed window, so just click on speed intervention, and I would open up the speed window, and I would bug the flap up speed, because I don't want to go below that speed. Okay, so we'll do that. Maintaining the path. And off we go. So we'll just continue with this in. We can say, uh, if we've been cleared the approach we can set I'd set 2500 now which is the altitude for uh, Tabet so we'll just put 2500 in to our MCP and then we'll transition on the approach want to verify you have uh, the identifier IATO and course 114 and that would be on both NDs or PFDs, and you can also look in the RADNAV page here and verify ILS 1119 and course 114 is set as well, because there are no course windows to set up on your MCP, so that's the only way you can verify it through here or on your RADNAV page. So that's looking good. Another thing I want to point out uh, when I was doing this, if you get taken on for vectors, it's quite common to set an intercept course to the FAF clean up your legs page. So the way you would do that is you take the FAF, bring it to the top, and then put the inbound course of 114. And what that would do, it should give you this intercept then, 114 in, inbound to the fix to FF11. I'm not going to execute, I'm going to race it, because if I do that, it's actually going to race the approach, which is a bug. And then the approach will erase, I won't be able to arm the approach, uh, so... I'll just leave it as is. So if you get taken for vectors and you know how to set an intercept course to the FAF and you want to do that, do not execute it right now in this airplane because it's going to get rid of your approach. Just leave the list this in. This is going to be... So if you're taking on vectors, you're going to be going off this course. Uh, you're just going to have to live with it until you uh, until you get cleared the approach and then you'll just have to arm the approach from there. But Okay, looking good. Should be able to see the island there. Island of Curso. And the airport should be over here. So looking good. Yeah, so for the most part, things are functioning pretty good. The plane is pretty viable, but there are bugs. Obviously, with VNAV's not perfect, The uh, that bug with the 
profile approach course, uh, if you do an intercept course, you know, it's things aren't perfect, but they are looking pretty good. And I don't think in VNAV it should should go down to uh, if your flaps are up, you should not go below the flap up bug speed. Uh, if uh, if they have that 240 in here, so, but I'm not 100% sure because I've never flown this airplane, so. But it would make sense to me that you wouldn't go below your bug up speed at any point until you've selected a lower flap setting. So I just overcome that by setting the speed myself. So probably want to start slowing down now. So we're in VNAV, uh, so I can select flap, go to flaps one, and if I close the speed window, it should go to that bug up speed. And this is another bug that goes below the bug up speed, or uh, the bug flap speed, sorry. So I have flap one selected. The bug should go right over the flap one speed. And that's a bug that's not doing that correctly when you're in VNAV. So I have to open the window and I have to bug it myself. Now select the flaps five. And I'll have to bug that speed myself. see all the missed approach uh, information there in blue. We'll climb straight ahead, it'll be a left-hand turn back to the public golf VWAR and then hold as published. Papa Julia golf VWAR. Okay, so we're below 200 knots, that's good. I'll just leave that speed till we roll out on final and then we'll configure prior to the flap. Get our gear down on flaps. Do our pre landing check. Yeah, it's nice to be able to fly this plane uh, more reliably in the sim. Still got a ways to go, but uh, big improvement overall. Now we should be able to arm the approach at any time. We've been clear for the approach. We're going through transition. Let's set standard. So you see that was correct. I set 4,000 feet and then it did make that uh, display of standard. So 2985. And I don't know what the actual altimeter is. I'm just going to hit B just to sync it up. So that looks pretty good actually. 2985 is right. So I should be able to arm the approach. So if I select approach. Now. When I select approach, it should show approach, not just localizer. And we have localized lope armed. So that should highlight the approach light over here. If I select lope only, then local light should pop up here. But So that's another bug there. But when I did select approach, it did, it did arm the uh, localizer and glide slope. So I'll go to the next stage of flap, flap 10. Set my bug speed for 10. As we make the turn, and you can see the glide slope and localizer indications are right here, so those should come in momentarily. Making a nice turn to final. It does a good job flying the LNAV tracks, I find. Here we go, localizer is captured, and you can see it's gone magenta. Glide slope is still a white diamond, so it hasn't captured yet. We're still in path. See the airport up straight ahead. So 
So I'll configure just a little bit early, just so we're not too rushed here. So I'll get the gear down. Go to flap 20. Set my flap 20 speed. And our ref speed will be, uh, our target speed will be ref plus uh, 5, so we'll go 158. 2500. And we can see we've captured the glide slope, and let's do our pre landing checklist. Landing checklist, gear is down. Speed brake will arm that. Should see speed brake arm comes up there, so speed brake is arm. Flaps are set, 30 and good. So the pre landing checklist is complete. Let's clear the checklist there, and we're on final. We're at uh, looking pretty good. So glide slope, everything's captured. Now, this airplane, because we're on an ILS at around 1500 feet rattled. We should see a land three enunciate up here, which would mean you could do a auto land uh, because all three this airplane has three autopilots. So as long as all three autopilots are engaged, you could do an auto land approach. and stuff to maintain the glide slope here, but a little bit below the glide path, it's correcting. Yeah, so a little pitchy I find here, the autopilot. Coming up on a thousand feet, we check and set, make sure our missed approach L2 is set. You can see land three is enunciated, there's a rattle. So it looks pretty good. A little bit pitchy, but sure if you can land in this airplane with the auto throttle on so we have flare rollout armed as well so we could do an auto land if we needed to but I'll disengage the autopilot and we will just manually land yeah, a little bit pitchy Disengage the autopilots. Just hand flight in from here. A little bit high. Disengage the auto throttle. Disarm the outer brake. found it a, a little bit pitchy on the ILS there and when I disengaged the autopilot I had to put a whole bunch of forward stick on to get the nose tracking properly so I'm guessing the airplane might have been on a trim that's why we got a little bit high I really had to put a lot of forward yoke 
just to keep the airplane uh, going down. Wasn't able to retrim the airplane fast enough, so that could be a bug. But we got it on the ground, so we'll just taxi clear and then uh, get our after landing checklist in. Again, it takes a lot of power in the turns here, this airplane. Okay, we're clear of the runway. I'll just bring it to a stop here and then we'll uh, do our after landing checklist. Okay, I cleared the caution. That was for the autopilot auto throttle. Shut those off. Okay, we'll get the uh, APU running. Our lane light off, taxi light on, strobe light off. Auto brake is automatically off. We'll get our flaps up and speed brake is down. And transponder, uh, if we don't need it on, we can put it in standby. That will be our after lane checklist. There is no after lane checklist modeled in the uh, checklist here it goes right to the shutdown checklist yes yeah, next so personally I think there should be an after lane checklist because there are a few items you want to double check one being the APU on and then uh, another one being the anti-ice uh, you might need to put it on force it on when you're on the ground if you're in uh, icing conditions because uh, in auto mode it'll shut off when you land on the ground so anyway yeah, there should be a takeoff checklist uh, or an after lane checklist, but they don't seem to have one modeled. Okay. So we can uh, taxi back in and then we'll uh, shut her down at the gate. Okay, taxi back into the gate. Just look up the APU and you can see the APU gens are available so we can shut down when we get there. Again, it takes quite a bit of power to get this airplane to move on the ground. Yeah, so overall, uh, this airplane's coming along nicely with the avionics update package. Uh, there was a package out there by a modder called Salty Simulations, which would uh, modify this airplane. It did improve it quite a bit, but I find the, especially the uh, FMC and the uh, LNAV VNAV capability of this aircraft is much better with the working title uh, mod. So yeah, hopefully uh, next month we'll see a few more improvements and they'll clean things up. And overall, I think we should have a very functional airplane. Same with the 787. Uh, it's coming along nicely as well. So definitely nice to have these planes updated in the sim. I recommend, though, just sticking with the uh, regular uh, sim and avoiding the uh, beta for now. As it can introduce a few bugs. This should be out next month, so it should be available for everybody to enjoy, whether you're on PC or Xbox. But uh, unless you uh, really want to try it out, I'd uh, stick with just the uh, regular sim and avoid the beta. Okay, we'll come in to one of these gates here. leading line there, so we'll make a left turn here. This airplane's so big, see it just, once you stop, it just wants to stop as soon as you want to start a turn here. Takes a 
lot of power. Shot that line a little bit. Yep. Not used to taxing a big plane like this. Okay, set our parking brake. And the parking brake set, taxi light can go off. And we'll come down and shut down the engines. Should automatically switch over to the APU. And at this point, we get our fuel, which is off. Window heat off. And we get our the ice off as well. Good, we get our hydraulics all off. And let's go to, we put our uh, bleed on for the APU. Let's go, why did we lose power here? Ah, uh, that's because I didn't put the APU generators on. That's my fault. Uh, yeah, you need to select those on there. Uh, unlike the Dreamliner, they're automatic, so you don't have to do that. Okay, yeah, so let's do our checklist. Checklist, uh, landing lights are off, taxi switches off, throttles idle, parking brake set, seatbelt selectors, yeah, we can get that off as well. Any ice is off, fuel flow, we got the switches are off, and beacon switch can go off. Let's double check that. Okay, yeah, that's our uh, shutdown checklist, so welcome to Curso. Nice, I hope you enjoyed the flight. Uh, yeah, it was nice to get uh, to do some flights here in the 747. It's a great airplane, the Queen of the Skies. It'll be uh, great to see some uh, additions to this uh, beta and uh, hopefully make this plane a much more usable aircraft in the sim. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did enjoy it, take time, hit that like button, uh, share, subscribe, sign up for notifications. So you'll see videos like this when I put them out in the future probably uh, wait for the next update for the uh, avionics update beta to come out and then we'll get back into the 787 and have a look at that again see what improvements they've made thanks for joining me and we'll see you next time on the bandit flight simmer channel bandit out